one. One of the singers wrote a song and said, Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me you, give me you. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, because it's me, oh, Lord, I'm on my knees, crying out to you, and it's me, oh, Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me you. Oh, give me you, oh, give me you, Lord, give me you, give me you, everything else can wait, give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Oh, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you. I need him every day of my life. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power, thy glory, so have I seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with the morrow of fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate, on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. For there shall they shall fall by the sword. They shall be the portion for foxes. That, but the king shall rejoice in God. For everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. And verse 1 said, God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. If I could preach in your hearing today, I'd like to preach on this simple thought, a thirsty land, a thirsty land. Lord, we love you. We bless you. God, I magnify you today. I worship you. I can't do nothing without you. I pray that you touch each and every mind, each and every heart. God, I pray that you would fill this place. God, I pray that you'd encamp angels around about this place. 
Minister and move and have your way today, Lord God. I pray, touch each and every mind, touch each and every heart. Walk up and down the corridors of our minds and hearts today. Minister to us, God, what we need. Open unto us, God, what we need today, Lord. I pray in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. A thirsty land. We live in troublesome times. We live in times that that are hard times, if you will. The psalmist David was in the wilderness of Judea when he began to pen these words. He was in a dry place. He was in a wilderness place. And many of us know what it is to be in a wilderness place, to be in a dry place. If you live for God long enough, you will go through dry places. You will go through places in your life that are seemingly without water, without any type of spring up, springing up anywhere and any type of, uh, of relief today. But I want you to understand that the dry seasons only last so long. The dry seasons only last a little while. Matter of fact, David even penned the words as the heart, the HRT, the deer, as the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When shall I come and appear before him? It is in these words that we find David looking for an oasis today. We need the oasis in our life. We need the word of God in our life today. We we need prayer in our life today. We need all the things that maybe have been talked about some this morning in our life today because we do go through dry places uh, matter of fact, I believe it was Isaiah that wrote down when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. The portrait that Isaiah paints is of a group of travelers who are beyond thirsty, they are dehydrated, they are poor, they are needy, they lack the basic necessity of human life. Can I tell you that we have to have water to survive? We have to have water. We are made up of water today in order to survive. We've got to have that water. Ain't you glad that Jesus told the woman that she needed the water of God. She needed that living well. She began to tell him, say, you don't have no water to draw from. The woman at the well, you don't have no bucket to draw with. But Jesus said, if you draw from this well, you'll never thirst again today. I'm glad that I found the living God. I'm glad that I found the living spring of water today. I'm glad that I know where the oasis is in the dry place today. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, as the psalmist began to write, he, he began to talk about the shider tree and the myrtle tree and the oil tree. He said, I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine tree and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand though that 
the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel had created it today. Can I tell you today, there are people that are thirsty today because they don't know the Lord. We live in a thirsty land. We live in a land that knows nothing about God today. Thank God that there are other kinds of drinks, if you will. There are other kinds of things in this world that that in the natural I can put my hand on. I I can put my hand on a Gatorade or an ice cold Dr. Pepper or something like that, but none of these things will ever take the place of water. None of these things will ever take the place of what water can do. Water is very important today. Water is something that you and I must have today. If we find ourselves with the desire that nothing in this world can satisfy us, can I tell you that we'll only be satisfied by the things of God. There are different reasons today. You may ask, why am I thirsty today? And we can look at thirst in the physical. One reason you can be thirsty today is because of dehydration will make you thirsty the not in taking a enough water today diabetes will make you thirsty it'll make you want more water exertion will make you thirsty and dry mouth will make you thirsty today and Thank God for the gift of thirst because if we didn't have the gift of thirst, we would probably fall over with a heat stroke. But as we begin to look at these things in the physical, we can begin to look at these things in the spiritual. The reason that people are thirsty today is because they're dehydrated on the things of God. They are lacking in the word of God and in prayer with God today. I don't have what I need. I am dehydrated. I'm about to fall over because I don't have the relationship that I need. I, I've got, I haven't taken in enough of God today. Can I tell you, you need God today. You need his word today. You need his presence today. Without God, you will not make it today. Can I tell you, some people may suffer from spiritual diabetes. They're taking in all the wrong things today. They're taking in the things that does not do anything for them but challenge and charge their bodies in the wrong way. The things that are just sugary and the things that are just bad. There are so many things that are in the world today that are bad. There are so many things that we take in from the world today. And if we don't have an outlet, if we don't have the right type of diet in our life if we don't get the right amount of nutrition the right amount of water in our lives today I want you to know that we will die of spiritual diabetes we are exhorting ourselves today on the things of the world but never falling upon the things of God today we are suffering dry mouth because we're talking the things of the world but we never speak what the so Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are beautiful, whatsoever things are holy, whatsoever things are just, we're not speaking on these things. If there be any virtue, if there be anything like these, he said, think on these things, speak on these things today. I want you to know that I need God in my life today because he is my oasis. It is him today that'll get me what I need. It is him today that'll take me where I need to go. It is David that we find in a desert. 
looking for God, looking for the things of God. And he said, I, I've got to know you. I've got to have you in my life. I thirst for God. I, I thirst for the living God. I, I need him today in my life. I, I long, I desire to be with God. He's not just something that I'm talking about knowing him, but I need to know him in an intimate way. His personal relationship with God and to dwell with him forevermore today. I want to know him in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. In a thirsty land where they offer up every other kind of help but godly help. Where they offer up, and I'm not against programs, but where they offer seven step programs instead of introducing you to Jesus. Where they try to introduce you to self help and meditation, but nobody meditates on the Lord. Even in a religious place where they say the name of God, but nobody says the name of Jesus. It's all right to pray in Jesus' name. Have you ever noticed? It's all right to do all these other things in Jesus' name except for get baptized in Jesus' name. But to really know him is to know him in his fullness and who he is. And I thank God that I know that he is an oasis. David was desiring and longing for God. David knew what it was to be on the run. He was at one point on a run from a destitute King Saul that sought to kill him, sought to take his life today. He was out in the desert, out in the wilderness places, not understanding what was going on, that God anointed him king of Israel, but he was being hunted down like a dog. But David had to learn to go through the desert places in his life. You and I have to learn to go through the desert places in our life. We have to learn to be sustained in the desert. It is in the desert. It's almost paradoxical. It's in the desert that you're going to grow. It's not on the mountaintop. It's not, it's not, it's not in the times that everything's going good, but it's in the times that things seem to be at their worst is when you grow. Matter of fact, Jesus even made the statement, a seed must go into the ground and then die in order to bring forth life ain't that something that something has to die in order to bring forth life I could get into the greenhouse effect and photosynthesis and you know all this stuff that we learn in school and how all these things work but this outer man just simply has to die. This fleshly man just simply has to die. And as I said in Henderson the other night, if we didn't go through troubles and trials, we never would pray. No, not real prayer. I'm talking about real prayer. Oh, I... 
same I lay me down to sleep as I'm going to sleep and fall asleep before I even get halfway finished. No, 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 no. I'm talking about real prayer. Prayer that's birthed from the inside. Prayer that's not pretty. Prayer that you wouldn't want somebody to pin down and read just like I wrote his. Because I'm sure there were things that David didn't even pin down that come out of his mouth. The desert place will teach you to pray. But you got to know how to survive in the desert. How many's ever been to the desert? You ever been to the desert? Anybody? Some? I've never been to the desert. I'd like to go out in the desert. Out in it. I mean, way out in it, but not without a guide. I can survive around here. I can survive in the woods. I know how to do that. Get me a knife, maybe a pistol. I'm good. But out in the desert, I don't know how to survive. I don't know where to go, and I don't know what to do. And in the desert, it ain't going to take real long to pass away. It's the desert places. It's the desert places that teach us. It's the desert places that teach us about audible prayers. It's the desert places that teaches us about the deeper things of prayer, the groanings, the primal voice. God can hear our deepest thoughts and unspoken needs today. Many people are looking for life in all kinds of places, Mars and all kinds of different places. They're looking for signs of life. But the number one sign of life is water today. Do you know that studies have shown that water consumption decreases fat deposits? Water is a natural appetite suppressant. Did you know that staying hydrated decreases anxiety? What what in the world are you talking about, preacher? What in the world are you going on about? When... Water can decrease the fat deposit. That means that anything that, if Jesus is the water source, anything that's not supposed to be in me, God knows how to purge it out of me today. If water is a natural appetite suppressant, that means when I pray in the Holy Ghost, that it knows how to suppress the things of the world from coming in. If staying hydrated means that it decreases anxiety, that means that the word of God has got to be right because I don't have to fear for no thing because the living water is on the inside of me today. I want you to understand that I know who the oasis is. Know who the master God is today in my desert place. I know what it takes to make it through today by calling on him. In the same way that the spirit helps us in our weakness. And we know not what we ought to pray the Bible says. For the spirit himself maketh intercession for us through wordless groans. He spoke, and he, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind and the spirit because the spirit 
intercedes for God's people in according with all of God today. Jesus called hunger and thirsting a blessing today. It was Jesus that said, He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled today. It is in the desert that we find Him today. It's not always on the mountaintop. It's not always in the green pastures that we find Him, but we find Him in the desert when we're thirsty. They say that if you're in the desert... And you're thirsty. Now, don't watch the cowboy movies. Because they're going to mess you up, okay? You go to that cactus and cut it open. And you drink what little bit of water's in there. That little bit of water is filled with alkaline. It's basically a poison that's going to start shutting everything down. You can't take very much of that. Uh, you're if you get out in the desert place where I'm talking about, anybody know what I'm talking about? The westerns, you know, Ponderosa and Gunsmoke, you know, Little Joe and Matt Dillon and Everybody's with me now, ain't you? Because I'm an original cowboy, buddy. I'm from Kentucky. And I watched all them shows. But you ain't going to have no cantina with you. And you ain't going to want to run into this big pond and fill up your canteen and get you something to drink. Because in this desert, you ain't going to know where the watering holes are at. But in the desert, they said if you could find a stump somewhere and begin to dig and stick your hand in where that stump is at, that you might find some water in there. If you could find some life somewhere, some kind of vegetation somewhere, you can begin to dig around that vegetation and you might find you some water somewhere. You, you, you can begin to look wherever you can find life at and begin to dig. Ain't it amazing that the word of God is life and when we're going through our desert places that we can dig through the word of God and begin to find life where, where life seemed like that it was drying up and everything seemed like that it was going away I, I want you to understand it's real important where you look for water in the desert place it's, it's real important to know that you know God when it comes time for the desert places because, because life is just life and it rains on the just and the unjust alike and whether you like it or not you're getting ready to go through some desert places and you better know where to look for water at. You better know where to find life at today. You better know where it is. That I can seek for him. Because I know if I seek for him I know if I dig there that there may be life-given water. See, the desert is not a fun place. The desert is a hard and cruel land. It's left many people dead and Right up and if you will just buzzard bait nothing left and the buzzards come and pick away everything that's left but if you know how to survive 
I'm talking about before the desert time hit. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But I believe that there were some other things that David knew. There was going to come some hard times. And I would just need the word of God. I didn't necessarily have... You know, there's there's times that I'm going through the desert places and there, there may be places that I'm at or places that I go that, that I don't have a, 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 my word of God with me. Of course, even when I'm at work, I've got the word of God with me because I've got it downloaded on my Bible. But there may be places that I'm at. There may be places in my mind, places, things that I'm going through. And, and the devil will begin to come in and say, you're going to dry up and you're going to die. And you, don't you see the buzzards circling around and the word of God begins to flow through my mind and flow through my heart and begins to circulate. Why? Because I had put it there. Not because we done like we done so many times at school. We took the books and put it under our pillow and slept on it and thought the knowledge was going to soak through my brain. That's what I thought. You can laugh at me if you want to. You done the same thing. <laughs> or you just, didn't look, you just didn't look at it. But at least I thought I was going to soak it up. If there's no word there, if there's no prayer life there, you see in the desert places you don't always feel God. In the desert places you don't have no direct word from God. Job said, I looked on my right hand and I couldn't find him. I looked on my left hand and I perceived him not. Couldn't find him. You know what he's saying? He's saying God's dark to me. He's just non-existent. He's just, he's left. He ain't left. He may have pulled back a little bit to let you go through this desert place. That you're going through. It's in the desert. That you'll find God. As I said it's in the desert that. You'll grow. It's in the desert that. That David began to see. Who God really was. It was in the desert. That David began to find. The provisions that he needed. And God began to supply for David when he was in the desert, when he was in the wilderness, when he was on the run from Saul. David found the provisions that he needed because his trust was in the water source. His trust was in God. I remember, I'll tell you how much trust that David had in God. David was in a battle. And he said, all that I could drink from the wells of Bethlehem, of Jerusalem, if I, if I could just drink from them wells. And his mighty men of valor broke through the line of defense, brought David back water and David said, I cannot drink this, but I'll pour it out to God. Why? Because God's my provider. God deserves all the glory. And I know that God will take care of me today. It is in the desert places that we learn about God. It was in my Tanakh that I began to read. And he said, In these same scriptures that I read to you, when I call you to mind upon my bed, when I think of you in the watches in the night, 
for you are my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. My soul was attached to you. Your right hand supports me. But he said, in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. It was David that was in the desert that was shouting for joy. Why? Because not only do we need water if we're in a desert, but I need a shadow place. I need a place that I can go into. I believe it was David that said that God was his strong tower. He could run into him. I thank God that I can hide under the shadow of the wings of the Most High today. I thank God that even in the desert place, I've got a place that I can go. I've got a place that I can seek comfort today. I've got a place that I can find rest for my soul today. Even in the desert places. In a thirsty land. In a land that's filled with so much violence. So many religious ideologies today. We live in a very spiritual world. Not spiritual good. We live in a very spiritual world. Just like Ephesus was spiritual. Ephesus was spiritual. We live in a modern day Ephesus. Spirituality. The spirit of homosexuality and the spirit of drugs and, and alcoholism and people transgendering, if you will, and doing all kinds of morbid acts, calling evil good and good evil. And we, we, we're living in that time. When they can shut a whole nation down. Just think about where we're at. When the government can shut a whole nation down. You're not going anywhere. Here. I'm not talking about in a socialist country. I'm talking about in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And they can just whoosh, shut her down. Say that's it. Matter of fact, you can't even go to church. Desert places. Dry places. Some people never even made it back. But yet here we are. Survivors today of the desert. Because it's God that brought us through. Do you know that by the time you're 70 years old, you've required one and a half million gallons of water to be consumed by the time you're 70. I've been preaching now for 21, 22 years, close to 22 years. How much more, God, do you think I needed today than I did when I started out? How much fuller of God should I be 20 years from now if I'm on this earth? Because Paul said we go from glory to glory. We don't, we don't pull back. When, when we begin to pull back, then we take the chance on being dehydrated. 
Why? Because we're in a thirsty land. We're in a place that requires, a place where we go out and we see every day and we hear every day in morality. We don't just hear it, but we see it. It's not just on the news anymore. It's in our small communities. It's not just in New York City anymore. It's not just in California anymore. But it's in our small towns. Well, let's just run them off. No, let's just get them saved. Let's let them find out what they've been missing this whole time. Because I don't know about you, but I was a part of this thirsty old world one day. And I was one of them that was dry and I was one of them that was parched. And just any time I could have fell over dead. But somebody came by and told me about Jesus. Can I tell you today, I thank God that even though we're living in a thirsty land, even though that we're living in dry places today, I want you to know that there's somebody that should be able to tell somebody, I know where the spring's at. I know what you're missing today. I know what you need. I know you're in a dry place, but God will fill you. God will quench your thirst today. All these things that you think you need you don't need them but what you need is him today it's him we don't know how to pray sometimes but God knows God knows what we need. It was Psalms. Again. Psalms 131. Behold how good and pleasant. It is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. But here's what I want you to look at. As the dew of Harriman, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for their the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. When you begin to look at the Word of God and you begin to look at Mount Harem today, you begin to look at everything that's going on in, in the Scriptures that, that He is reading to us, the things that, that He begins to point out the things that he begins to say lets us know that Mount Harem was a mount that was outside of the city. It was in a desert place today. But it could be seen for miles and known for its greenery out in the middle of a desert. The dew as the hot water and the cold as the hot air and the cold air begin the cold air come down from the mountain the hot air begin to come up from the desert it begin to make a dew point and water begin to run down it begin to run down into streams and as the streams begin to flow green grass and greenery everywhere begin to grow and people could see the oasis they could see The beautiful landscape. In the middle of the desert they could see everything that was going on there. 
And David began to look at this and he began to see and he began to wonder of all the things that was going on. He began to wonder of all the things of God knowing that he don't have, knowing that he didn't have maybe necessarily the education that we have now or the things that we knew now but he began to see the dew as it ran down from Hermon and as the dew descended upon the mountains of Zion and, and the Lord commanded the blessings even life evermore he could begin to see that oasis out in the middle of the desert and I'm here to tell you today that no matter what you're dealing with and no matter what you're going through today in the middle of your desert is an oasis today and God has set up a place where you'll be able to tap into him and you may not just be able to get to it right away but it's sitting there for you to see saying I know that I may not be there yet but I don't have to give up there is an oasis there is a help there is help for this lost and dying world there is help for saints that are going that are having a hard time setting on the pew there is help today in this desert land there is help today in this thirsty land and I don't have to lay here and die I don't have to just lay here sometimes we go through things and we think I'll just lay here and die Sarah, one of her concubines, Hagar, had a son by Abraham. They tried to help out God. See, nothing good comes from trying to help out God. You just let God be God. And, and I'll, I'll put it this way. I'll just stay in my lane and let God be God. But eventually it come to were that the women couldn't stay together anymore. Hagar takes her child and puts him under a tree and goes far away from him. She said, I'm going to die in this desert and I'm just going to leave him there and, and that's it. And we're just going to die. I'm going to watch him die. But an angel of the Lord came. And let him know, let her know that your son's going to be king. He's, he's going to be a prince. He, he's gonna, there's going to be many princes and many things that's going to come out of him. And you're not going to lay here and die. And I'm not going to get into all the detail of what all that means today. But what I'm here to tell you is that we get into places where we think we're going to die. But God didn't bring you to it not to bring you through it. If God puts you in the desert, God's going to bring you through the desert. And you just got to get a hold of the fact that I'm going to have to go through this as hard as it may be, though the struggle it may be, I'm going to have to go on. Because I know that there's a watering source. I know that God's not going to leave me here in this dry place. I know that it may last for a little while, but it's not going to last forever. I, I know that we are in dry places. We're in a thirsty land today, but it's not forever. I know we're... We're circling around. I know we're marching through the land and it's a thirsty place. I understand this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I, I understand that. But until I get there, I know where I can tap in. I don't, I don't have to live down in the dumps. I don't have to live in a bad mood today. I don't have to live sad and wore out. But I can have some joy in the middle of the journey. I can have some water in the middle of my journey I can get a hold of God I can tap into the spirit of God and get a little bit of heaven while I'm going down here through the desert I don't have to just lay here and die
And I don't have to just exist. If you're living for God and you're just existing, you're missing it. You're missing it. I'm just barely making it through. I hear people get up and they're supposed to be testifying and they're whining. You've heard it. Come on. Well, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Well, I don't know if you're going to make it neither. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I was a pastor one day. Imagine sitting under me. I don't know why, I don't know if you're going to make it or not neither. I can give you instruction manual and I can pray for you. But I don't know if you're going to make it. Yeah, you're going to make it. You're going you're gonna to do more than just make it. Because we're more than conquerors. M- more than conquerors. We, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't have to sit here and die. I don't have to sit here and dry up. It, uh, am I, am I going to go through hard times? Am I going to get upset? Am I going to get down in the dumps from time to time? Yeah, but you don't have to live there. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay in desert places. You don't have to stay thirsty all the time. There is something to tap into. I'm here to tell you today. God wants to give somebody more than just an existence. I'm just existing. I'm just here. I'm just coming into the church Sunday morning, whenever it is, Wednesday night, Thursday night. I can't remember. And I'm just here. And then... I feel a little goosebump or something, but when I go back, when I go back home, then then it's just the same way. You you can't survive like that very long. You can't make it like that very long. Because The oasis is not just for when you come here. The the flowing is not just for when you come here. But I can get down on my knees at home and I can begin to feel the flow. And the refreshing begin the refreshing begin to come in in my home and in my in my spirit and I, I can be refreshed. Do you know many times when I was When I was a young minister, I worked 12 hour days, six days a week. Working still, slung still all day long. Picking it up, slinging it, beating it with hammers. Sometimes I want to beat my co-workers with hammers. I get up at 3.30 in the morning. I get up at 3.30 every morning. Get on the road, be in the work by 5 o'clock. Get home about 6 o'clock at night. And then I would work out. And then, i go to an old cold garage if it was cold in the winter or a hot garage if it was hot in the summer. And kneel down at the old weight bench and call out to God. Many times my wife can tell you she heated up my supper. I didn't. Not, not bragging because I failed God so many times. I haven't always been what I needed to be. Sometimes I still slip. That's just reality. I don't know. I don't know how to be anything but transparent. Because I want. 
I stop here to say this. If I want to be anything, I want to be like Jesus. And if Jesus was anything, he was transparent and he was tangible. I don't want to be one of them preachers that can't be transparent. And I don't want to be where I can't be tangible. I, I want to be able to be touched by people when they're infirmities. But I remember all them times calling out to God. I remember trying to get into bed at least by 10 o'clock because I had to get up at 3.30 in the morning. And God began to be dealing with me at 12 o'clock. And I'm like, you're kidding. This, this couldn't wait till in the morning. But he was checking out my faithfulness. And especially on a Wednesday night, I would come to church. I, I, would, I would get ready. I'd come home and I was so tired. I'd get home just enough time to get a shower and go to church. Not, not eat supper, just enough time to get home, get a shower, and, and get into the house of God. But when I would come into the house of God, it would just be like all the weariness just went away. And I began to lift my hands and worship God. But it wasn't just in those times of going to church, but in those times of prayer and seeking God that I could go to Him. Didn't always feel him. Didn't always feel him. But when I would come to some of the most hardest things that I would go through, that I just seemingly wasn't going to make it through, God would provide provision for me the water that I desperately needed he would bring to me the manna that I desperately needed God would bring to me in my darkest times in my darkest hours in the times that I was walking through the desert and it seemed like there was no hope It seemed like there was no help. There would be a spring of water coming up. Can we stand to our feet? We live in a thirsty land today. There are some people that are under the sound of my voice that are thirsty. It's a... Uh, You know, the only God, God's so different from, from anything you can ever imagine. Stuff, stuff don't seem right. If you want money, you got to give money. I'm broke, God. Here, I got a dollar left. Here it is. Then God provides. Because He's not after your money anyway. What he's after is your faith. But in order to get over, you got to give up. I ain't never seen anything like it. You won't ever see anything like it. God is just totally different. In order to get over, you got to give up. In order to make it, you know, in, in the spiritual sense, for Christians, we just hang on. We hold on. 
But if you're in this church, but not really where you need to be, and I don't know who you are today because I don't know anybody's life in here, the only way that you're going to get what you've been longing for is to give up. That's it. Because it's a thirsty land. It's a dry land. Ain't nothing getting any better. Nothing. I, I went, I, I'm trying to quit, I'm trying to quit. I went, I went riding down the road yesterday. Um, I'm, I, I know that to some of y'all that, that don't really seem like a whole lot, but next month I'll be turning 45. And I got to thinking about the world that we live in and the world that I grew up in and the world that my kids are having to grow up in. Yes. It's not the same world. Mm. Not the same world it was in the 70s and 80s. It's just just not. We go ride our bikes. We... We done whatever we wanted to without having to worry about anybody trying to grab us, without without propaganda trying to be shoved down our throats. I remember the I remember the town drunks, and, and, and I remember the pool halls, and I remember walking in the pool hall, and and the old men say, "Boy, I'm gonna tell you, Mama, if you don't get out of here." But now they walk in at 11, 12, 13 years old and they're trying to sell them dope. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying if they died in their lost condition that, that they went to heaven just because they tried to do the right thing. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is just being good ain't going to cut it. And the world's never going back to what it used to be. Whatever normal is, if somebody finds out what normal is, you let me know, but but normal is over. Right. What what I would consider normal is over. I was pretty emotional yesterday. I just went out by myself. Just had to go. You'll get there. It'll happen. I told her, I said, I'm taking a car. I'm going down the road. I don't know where I'm going. I went, I went down to Dawson Springs where I grew up. Mm-hmm. I left Madisonville, went to Dawson Springs, drove down by the plastic factory that had been tore down by the tornado where my daddy worked for 36 years and, and, and just, just drove around, looked at everything. But Paul began to talk about all the things he had. You know, Paul was an educated man. You know what Paul said? He said, I counted all as dung. I began to think about the soldiers that gave their life. I began to think about my uncle fought fighting in Vietnam and my granddad fighting in World War II. And I, I began I, I began to think about all, all kinds of things. I began to think about standing up and pledging allegiance to the flag in school and I, I, I go back to thinking about even when I played ball and, and, and we would pray before the ball games and I, 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 just, I just remembered all this all, all, all this stuff just come flooding back but in all the goodness that we thought we had it still really means nothing without God Do, do I wish that people were as moral as they used to be? Sure. Sure. Do I wish they still said the Pledge of Allegiance and done all these things? Sure I do. But my hope is not in this world. Right. My hope is not in this nation. My hope is not in the next president.
If you want to know, I'll let you know. I voted for Donald Trump. And I'd vote for him again. But my hope wasn't in Donald Trump. I prayed for Donald Trump because I knew he needed God. I pray for the current president because I know he needs God. See, I don't esteem one above the other. I pray for our Congress and, and our Senate and uh, our local forms of government because they all need God. Because they're living in a thirsty world and they're taking in stuff that they think that's going to help them and at the end of the day, it's going to die. And people, and I don't mean this to sound, we, people that are like me. I don't have a bunch of money. I don't, I don't have big homes and BMWs and all these type things. I, I don't have the big bank account. I just don't have it. Let me even put it down even further than this. There's, there's people that I see every day that breaks my heart. They can't even form a sentence. They can't even hardly walk because they're so doped out of their head in the little town that I live in. They're in a thirsty land. I've got an aunt and uncle, it's just as good as they can be, just as moral as they can be. The brother and sister, neither one of them ever got married, never had a boyfriend, girlfriend, or anything. Just as moral and good people as they can be. But they're living in a thirsty land. And if they don't get it right with God, That's right. they're not going to make it. They're going to dry up and they're going to die. You any better than anybody else? I'm just saved. I found out what the oasis is. Now I'm going to let go. These altars are open. As he begins to sing, let's make our way forward and pray.